Welcome to Initiation into the Higher Mysteries from the Way of Initiation by Dr. Rudolf Steiner, Vegetarian, on Words of Wisdom. Born in 1861, Dr. Rudolf Steiner was a great Austrian polymath, philosopher and scientist who made influential contributions in the fields of education, science, spirituality and medicine. He is perhaps best known for pioneering the holistic educational methods for the Waldorf schools. An eloquent public speaker and gifted writer, he gave over 6,000 lectures in his lifetime and also gained recognition as a literary critic. His writings cover a wide range of subjects and he published more than 25 books, including Mysticism at the Dawn of the Modern Age, The Way of Initiation, and Intuitive Thinking as a Spiritual Path, The Philosophy of Freedom. He developed and taught an esoteric spiritual philosophy called Anthroposophy, based on the science of the spirit. Let us now continue with the selection from the chapter Initiation from Rudolf Steiner's book The Way of Initiation. Here the author explains how through trials the initiation candidate will gain more clarity on his way to comprehending the higher knowledge. Initiation The first trial consists in obtaining a clearer comprehension of the corporeal attributes of what seems to be lifeless things than of plants, of animals, of human beings, in the way that the average person possesses them. This does not mean what is commonly called scientific knowledge, with that it has no connection, but it has to do with intuition. What usually occurs is that the initiate discloses to the candidate how the objects of nature and the essence of living things reveal themselves to the spiritual and mental hearing and sight. In a certain way, these things then lie revealed, naked, before the beholder. Attributes and qualities which are concealed from physical eyes and ears can then be seen and heard. Heretofore, they have been unwrapped as in a veil, and the falling away of this veil for the candidate occurs at what is called the process of purification by fire. The first trial is therefore known as the fire trial, which will briefly be explained thus. For some people, the everyday ordinary life is a more or less unconscious process of initiation by means of the fire trial. These persons are those who have passed through a wealth of developing experiences and who find that their self-confidence, courage and fortitude have been greatly augmented in a normal way who have learned to bear sorrow and disappointment from the failure of their undertakings with greatness of mind and especially with quiet and unbroken strength. Those who have gone through such experiences are often initiates without knowing it and it needs but little to open for them the spiritual hearing and sight to make them clairvoyant. For it must be noted that a genuine fire trial is not merely intended to satisfy the curiosity of the candidate. He would learn undoubtedly many unusual things of which others devoid of such experiences can have no idea. But yet this knowledge is not the end nor aim but merely the path to the end. The real aim and object is this, that the candidate shall acquire for himself through this knowledge of the higher worlds, a greater and truer self-confidence, a higher and nobler courage, and a perseverance and attitude of mind altogether different from what he could have obtained in the lower world. After the fire trial, 
a candidate may turn from the school, but because he has gone thus far, he will accomplish his ordinary life work, greatly strengthen in all his spiritual and physical relations, and in his next incarnation, he will continue to seek further initiation and advancement. In his present life, at all events, he will prove himself a more useful member of society, will be of greater service to humanity than he was before, and in whatever position he may find himself, his firmness, prudence, and favorable influence over his fellows will have greatly increased. After coming out of the fire trial, if he should wish to continue in the occult school, he then has to be instructed in a certain writing system, which is used by those in the school. Occult teachings are written in this occult writing system because what is really occult can neither be perfectly spoken of in words of our ordinary speech, nor set forth in the ordinary ways of writing. Those who have learned much from the initiates can but partially translate the teachings of occultism into terms of ordinary speech. The symbols or signs of the secret script are not arbitrarily invented or imagined, but correspond to powers which are active and efficacious in nature. It is through these symbols or signs that one learns the language of such matters. The candidate immediately sees for himself that these symbols correspond to the figures, tones and colors which he has learned to perceive during the periods of probation and enlightenment. He now understands that all which went before was like learning how to spell and that only now does he begin to read in the higher worlds. All that appeared to him before, a separate figure, stones and colors, is now revealed to him as a perfect unity, a coherent harmony, and here, for the first time, he attains a real certainty in observing and following the higher knowledge. Hitherto it was not possible for him to be sure that what he saw had been clearly or correctly perceived. Now at last it is possible that a correct understanding between the candidate and the initiate begin to arise concerning the spheres of the higher worlds. For no matter how close the connection between the two may be, no matter what form their interchanges may take in ordinary life, the initiate can only communicate to the candidate on these planes in the direct form or figures of the secret alphabet. Through this occult speech, the student also learns certain rules of conduct for life, certain duties and obligations of which previously he knew nothing whatever. When he learns to know these rules, he is able to perform actions which have a significance and a meaning such as the actions of another who is not initiated can never possess. The only point of view from which he is now able to look open things, the only plane from which he can now make manifest his deeds is that of the higher worlds, and the instructions concerning such deeds can only be read or understood in the secret script. Yet, it must be clearly understood and emphasized that there are persons who unconsciously have the ability or faculty of performing these actions, notwithstanding they have never been in an occult school. Such helpers of humanity and the world proceed blessedly and beneficently through life. There are certain fundamental reasons, which cannot be here discussed, why they are in possession of seemingly supernatural gifts. 
The only difference between these persons and the pupils of an occult school is that the former act unconsciously, while the latter work with the full knowledge, insight, judgment, and understanding of the entire matter in hand. Often the candidate has to win by training that which has been bestowed by a higher power upon his fellow for the good of humanity. One should freely and openly honor these favored ones of God, but he should not, on their account, consider the work of the occult schools unnecessary or superfluous. Intelligent viewers, we appreciate your company for today's Words of Wisdom. 